Welcome to our channel. We are the Mullet family. Today, we are in a winter wonderland. I feel like I'm in a snow globe. It's beautiful. It's not very cold though. I'm just on a little stroll right behind my house. It's just quiet, peaceful, beautiful. Every year around February, our school goes skiing on Blacktail Mountain here in Montana. And guys, I've been continuously trying my hand at sourdough bread. And every day I feel like I get a little better. I have made so many loaves that were flops and thick bricks of bread that went right out to the chickens. Stay tuned all the way to the end of the video and Marvin and I will go through some of your comments. I hope that you enjoy this content. If you do, give us a like, subscribe if you haven't already. Ski Resort is a beautiful spot to go skiing and every year around February our school takes off for a day and spends a day skiing the slopes at Blacktail Mountain. It's just a lot of fun. Manual. You excited to go skiing? Do I zip it? Wait till you get down there. Hi, Manual. Keep to the right.
Daniel. There's Jerome. And here we are on the ski lift with Manuel. Manuel, are you having fun? Yeah. This little guy loves thrill and adventure. The faster you can go, the better, right? Well, if you go faster, then you're probably tripping. Yeah. 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 It's pretty fast. Not much snow up here this year. There's places on some of the steep double black diamonds that you're scraping rock and gravel.
Clinton, come. <laughs> we can attach the boot to you next time. You don't <laughs> have to put it, get out. Yeah. Go ahead and just have him put it on. They'll ride together here. They'll be fine. <laughs> Yeah, you look like a hat net. The day is over. What have you guys got to say? It was fun. Yeah. Manuel always loves anything with rides or thrills. I played the.
sourdough loaf. I've been trying sourdough now for quite a while and I've had so many flops. I just baked this this morning and I am so excited how nice it turned out. Now we just need to cut into it, see how it looks on the inside, right? That's what matters. I want to show you my loaf of sourdough. Now, I am sure it could be even more improved, but for the amount of flops and bricks I've had in the past, I think this is good. Taste some of my sourdough. Tastes like sourdough, a little bit sour, <laughs> but very good. Thanks for joining us. We're not where we intended to be. We headed up to a really beautiful lookout and even with the chains on the truck, chained up the tires, the snow was too deep. We ended up shoveling a lot of snow, getting stuck, turned around, um, came back down, found, found this little spot. Got a couple of really nice views um, with the cabinets in the background here and getting to your comments. And if you're wondering why this is it's because when we were driving up uh, there was a log across the road and we didn't see it because it was under the snow so my coffee spilled over my sheets so <laughs> yeah Larry Lodar Libby was that where Joas and Priscilla lived isn't it Mary yes that's uh, where they're originally where they lived and they just moved away up to Alaska about a year and a half ago something like that yeah. We'll probably have them back sometime this summer. Lester Chup, you seem like a, such a wholesome, functional family and love the spiritual content. Just wondering, do you subscribe to being Amish or are you simply a Bible church? Maybe you've covered this one in one of your videos. I've not been tying in that long. I'm always looking forward to what you publish. So the reason we call ourselves Amish is we were known as the Amish group um, before we... Um, kind of abandoned the traditional horse and buggy, um, like the traditional Amish lifestyle or whatever. So yes, we are more um, probably be classed as a Bible church, but all the locals here, um, there was a time when we didn't know what we we're gonna call ourselves. So every, every, all the locals just called us the Amish church. So we just kind of stuck, yep, stuck to that. We both grew up Amish. So we, I grew up with a horse and buggy, you know, going, uh, I was Amish till I was, Old order Amish till I was in my 20s, and so were you. Right? Yeah, I was 21 when I started driving a vehicle. So, yeah. yeah. Um, another question Janet Kurtz, the table came out really well. Why did you varnish the underside? Does it help potential warping of wood or help it cleaner? Just wondering. Thanks. Stuffed meatloaf, I'm sure. That's on the menu in heaven. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it was good, but not that good. <laughs> so, yes, the reason that I put that I varnished the bottom side and I also maybe I didn't show it I also fastened cross member strips that I screwed down uh to keep that to keep that uh, tabletop level um have, I've had projects in the past where I've learned um actually I didn't have the project I learned off other people's mistakes uh, one of my brothers <laughs> made a nice big countertop for somebody that was a whole tree that was I think 18, 20 inches wide and about 16 foot long. Ran that thing through the planer, sanded it just as smooth as could be, put an epoxy on it, 
screwed it down pretty secure. And about two years later, there it, it arched enough to the point where you couldn't set something on it without it sliding off. Oh my, um, that was so, not good. And he epoxied the top, and so the top was completely sealed, and the wood kept shrinking, and so it kind of did, kind of did this thing. Um, so is that why you uh, yeah, varnished the That's backside. why I varnished the backside, and also, also put. Uh, Put the reinforcement in if you guys remember i made a, a breakfast bar for a customer going on a year two, ago two, two years ago I was think. it two years did the same thing had a nice really thick chunk of red fur that was sawed down cured it in the shop for over a year and we ended up putting stress cuts underneath it putting heavy channel iron underneath it or angle iron and secured that just to keep that thing flat so yeah, that's that's a good eye that you caught that that I varnished the bottom side. Cheryl and, Knapp, eight eight nine four. You said try beef bacon. I need to try that. It crisps up just like pork bacon. Beef bacon can be hard to find in the small rural areas. Here in Fort Worth, we can find it at Kroger. Central Market, Jewish owned stores, etc. I don't eat pork and don't like turkey bacon. Enjoyed your video. You know, we rare, like you said before, we rarely eat pork. And on the February camping trip, there's usually bacon in the morning. And I've discovered if I eat bacon, I just don't feel that great for a while. There's there's a reason that it was not allowed in the old old covenant, the Old Testament. Um, yeah, definitely not the healthiest. We're gonna have to try beef bacon. Yeah, I that that's, sounds really, I'm gonna really try good. that, Cheryl. Um, Wilma Joe, hi there. I enjoyed watching your videos. Can you tell me where you got the incubator? Was it Amazon? If you can, can you link it? Thanks so much. I love the down to how down to earth you are and all your yummy food you make. God bless you all. Joanne Yutzi from Missouri. Did you post that in the comments? Yeah, uh, I posted that under your comment, Joanne. I think you got that at Amazon, didn't you? Yeah, we got that at Amazon. Yeah. And talking about the incubator, that leads us to our current situation. Um, unfortunately, it seems we always have some little mishap or glitch that happens during the three-week process of getting those eggs to hatch. Like yeah. Power outages or whatever. The we had mm -hmm. this past, like ha about a week ago, we had like a half a day power outage. I was gone from, wasn't home. And I come home and the clocks are off. Uh, the li the timer lighting in the chicken coop is off. And I was like, did the power go out? Oh yeah, I was out for half a day. Um, and then today it went out again. So I quickly went and put it down by the stove, put a thermometer there to try to regulate the heat. Uh, and to get the generator. And I forgot about the incubator when the power went out. Yeah. So, yeah, they didn't. So, yeah, went went and got the generator. And as my dad taught me, I always check the oil. I checked the oil and I opened the, the cap and it starts gurgling out a lot of gasoline in the oil. So my shutoff, there's something in the generator that needs to be fixed. So I ended up draining the oil out, went to get gas and all the gas is in the four-wheeler. So I had to go to town. <laughs> <laughs> um, got the had the generator running for a couple of hours, and then the power came back on. So at this point, this is just life on the farm. There's a potential that the chicks aren't going to hatch. But like, we'll they, let you know. You know they they may have mm -hmm. gotten too cold. I know they can get they can cool off for a while. Like the house is seventy degrees. Uh, in the wild, the hens will get off, or like turkeys or whatever, they'll get off for a while. Um, I know they're pretty hardy, and in about three days we'll find out. So yeah, it's it's just it's a real bummer at this point. We've kind of got our fingers crossed. We're not exactly sure how many we're going to get. Pam Boone, you wrote, "Hello, sweet mullet family. Wow, the table slash desk turned out beautiful. Good job, Marvin. I loved it. Ah, oh, your supper looks so inviting and delicious. The chicks are getting close." Woohoo, can't wait. And Mary, your hair bun looked absolutely stunning. <laughs> <laughs> you looked so pretty. And please tell Uncle Simon I truly enjoyed his book. Oh, that's great to know. Made my heart hurt a lot, but so happy it all turned out for the best for him. My sister 
is reading it now. Stay safe, warm, and God bless. Simon, if you're watching, maybe you can thank her personally. Yeah. I know you read I know you watch the videos and you read the comments. Too. You know, Simon, a lot of people <laughs> love your book. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Susan Chuckle 8124. Wonderful video, breathtaking scenery, driving during driving. Gorgeous table, very talented, delicious dinner, waiting on chicks, and Mary, you look beautiful. Yeah, isn't she a beauty? <laughs> <laughs> mm. I, I'm amazed. I'm getting a lot of comments on the table. Yeah. Um, we have an old table that we replaced with the current table we have, and our old table had four legs on it, and the one we have now is like a big leg pedestal that has like one big uh, pedestal in the middle that flares out the four legs. And we don't like that table nearly as no, much as the old. It's, it's not, it's, a it's nice not sturdy, table. like it rocks, it's not stable. So we're. I've been on Marketplace. I'm looking for chairs that would match the old table. You go look at our first videos. I'm yeah. thinking that table is in those videos. It's like and kind then of more the, the plan table. is the plan is to refurbish that table. Yeah. And uh, get that back in the house, and maybe we'll even show you the underside of it. The there's kids. Some, there's some little yeah. boys that go, and they've got all kinds of crayons and markers and drawings in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they go under the table and just start coloring and marking. Ness Clark, you said, terrific video. Your contents in the table look delicious. You and your sister make the most wonderful challah bread. Those boys are so lucky to have a creative mom. I've never seen a stuffed meatloaf quite like that. Yummy. Marvin has such interesting stories to share about camping. He's the master carpenter. God bless your week. Yeah. Um, last one week ago, we had the February camping trip, and I think we had the most guys there ever. The fish weren't very big, but um, we had a couple that got away on us, uh, got a bunch of perch. Beautiful afternoon, Friday afternoon. Um, during the night, it started raining. Saturday morning, it started raining. So, you know, we got up, ate breakfast, and kind of just went home. A lot of times, if it's nice, I, I had thought that I would maybe, you know, fish half a day or so. Uh, Morgan and some of the younger boys went out right after at daylight right after daylight and they caught a bunch of fish the next morning also black bear 94 and 60. when it comes to the question answer part you two appear to have a warm contempt for each other boy you know it takes a positive and a negative to make things run <laughs> what are you the positive and I'm the negative <laughs> or opposite the track you know <laughs> she's the positive i'm the negative <laughs> oh. <laughs> Christine Schwartz uh, commented, hello, my family. Hope you're still doing well. Best of wishes with the chick hatching. I think your little table looks beautiful. And the meatloaf. Hmm, would love to try that. Thank you for sharing. Anyway, we got to show you guys the beautiful mountains. It's kind of cloudy. Like, it really snowed a lot today, and then the sun came out. Now there's parts that are clouding over again. We're going to show you the other part a few more miles up the mountain sometime this spring. It's just kind of a spot you're driving along and all of a sudden there's kind of a cut bank. The trees are open and you've got just a beautiful view of the mountains kind of looking up a bunch of drainages. There's another spot we want to show you guys. It's a swimming hole and we've camped there a few times uh, during the February camping trip. Kind of a neat little place where the creek comes and hits a granite wall or rock wall and there's a deep pool there, probably eight foot deep. Um, the boys love jumping off of it. Yeah. We, the boys love going swimming there. And I guess the benefit to swimming in that place is it doesn't matter if it's 105 degrees out. The thing about this swimming hole is regardless of the time of year and temperature, it will always cool you off really fast because it's snow melt coming off the mountains. It's really cold. Even in the middle of the summer, you jump in there about three times and you're shivering. You know what we should do uh, when the spring snow melts? All the creeks are just overflowing and rushing, and it's just really amazing. I should just, we should just go around and getting footage of all the creeks and the... There's a few places we should go. We should go up to the Yak Falls. Yeah, those we are just beautiful. The Yak Falls, Copper Falls, the Snowshoe Kootenai. Falls, and there's another Kootenai one. Kootenai Falls. And the Kootenai Falls, yeah. Yep. yeah. Yeah. Thank you guys for joining us. We hope you enjoyed this content. Next time we'll 
tell you maybe how many chicks we have. Yes. If we hatch any. Mm -hmm. So goodbye till next time. We wish yep. you the best this coming week.